Good October to everyone, and thanks for joining us. My name is Chaz Henry, and no, you didn't just experience a time warp. Uh, we, had, we had a communications issue. Uh, I am the founder of Power Chalk, and I'm talking today with Sterling Strother. Uh, Sterling, you there? I'm here. Sterling, thanks for joining us. Coaches, Sterling is the director of the USA Tennis Coach, uh, a director of USA Tennis Coach. He's the founder of Excel Tennis. Uh, which is a player development program in Cary, North Carolina. Uh, he's also the coach of the Cary Academy uh, Varsity Women's Tennis Program, uh, who I know is killing it this year. Thank you very much. And mm -hmm. he's, he's the author of an automatic rhythmic response method that he calls 1-2 Reset. And we're, we'll talk about that a little later. But most importantly, and for today's session, he is... Uh, both a coach and a student. I'm always impressed with guys who have taught, you know, at, at the high levels that Sterling has taught at, and are still really students of the game. So I, I say that because when we met two months ago, Sterling called and he asked us about keyframes, you know, specifically how to define a keyframe for the tennis serve. So with a quick background, let me tell you what we mean by keyframes. Keyframes are the name comes from cartoon animations. And a keyframe is where artists define the extreme positions of emotion. And then a team of animators comes in and they draw the, what they call the in-betweens. So uh, Power Chalk, the motion analysis system, powerchalk.com, has a keyframing system. And honestly, Sterling, most coaches have not really discovered the keyframe feature. And like I said, I'm very impressed that you were digging for it. What, what specifically were your goals in tagging the steps of a surf? Well, Chaz, um, thanks for having me on. This is an awesome opportunity. I'm really looking forward to just continuing to develop our relationship. Um, and uh, but the one thing I was looking at was to really look at developing a language um, that was really clear, a clear way to communicate with my students, um, something that's easily relatable and just a natural uh, way to communicate. You know, um, using, being familiar with the coordination chain, the kinetic chain, you know, as coaches we see this process of, like, like you define it, keyframes, we see certain points, say, in the CERB that we're looking for our students to achieve certain places. And so these are very crucial parts or points of a stroke, especially the CERB. Um, and just, we just want to make sure that the, our students um, and players are are hitting those specific points, and so well, that's what really attracted me to the whole keyframe concept um, that was in Power Chalk. Okay, so so with that, let me let me kind of take you coaches through what Sterling has been doing, and and again, this is this is something he developed to, to try to work with students. Now, what I've got, I've got the uh, Chalk Talk Telestrator up, and I've got Chloe, so I'm going to go ahead and stop Chloe here. And as you may or may not know, if this is you know if this is a new feature to you, then uh, it really is the, the 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 door to the keyframe here. So when I hover over this little block right here, I get a key icon. And when I pop that up, here's what Sterling's done here with his summer vacation, and that is to name the parts of the serve. So Sterling, I'm going to just kind of have you take us through. And so you notice he's he's given a name. And then he's also given a frame. Now, now what you can do within the keyframe editor is you can, after you describe these, these positions, that you can just kind of pull the playhead to that position, and then you can press the button. And so, so I'm going to go all the way back to where you, you've labeled stance. Now, I can press the plus, plus, plus. You know, I can advance my frame that way, or I can just roll my mouse wheel. So you've set stance at 2. Uh, from Stance, Sterling, take us through the positions you named. So one of the things, um, obviously, Stance is, is a very important place to begin, you know, with your student. So you need to identify that. Uh, the next place is a high hand. So the high hand position is something that um, you define as the le what is the highest part, or highest point of the non-hitting arm. Uh, in case, in the case of Chloe, she's a right hander, so that would be her left hand. So where is the highest point that she stops her left hand? So uh, we've got that at 30 on the 30. And then the next is the squat position. Um, so where is the place where she actually is at the bottom of her squat ready 
to explode upward or leg drive upward. So we define that as 38, um, right at that point where she's right beginning to go upward. And then racket back position would be the lowest point or downward place of the, of the racket right at 42 is I believe where we define Chloe's right there. Right. So the lowest point of the walket tip, yep. And then the contact point, obviously, where she makes contact. Yeah, there's the racket back position. There it is. And then contact point where she makes contact with the ball. And then the land position is where she lands with her, uh, in this case, her left foot, because she's a right-handed player. A, a left-handed player would be right foot. So where does she land and, and where is her fully landed where she's balanced? Okay. Yes, yeah, so so I noticed you've marked, you've marked that as 58, so it's not just uh, the toe touch. Now, we have, we have a similar position in the baseball swing called toe touch, but you're, you're right, really right. talking about when, when she fully accepts the weight. Exactly, right where she fully accepts the weight on her left foot. So, I, Because we're looking for a good balanced position, and if you notice, her right leg is more like an arabesque position, and that term comes from ballet where she's using that right leg to stabilize her balance and remain in, in good balance. Right. The next place uh, one identified was the opposite land, which is where the next foot touches. Now, in the case of Chloe, she just kind of bails on this. <laughs> she kind of sandbags the opposite <laughs> land. And this is, this is important because the opposite land, and then it goes into the split hop, and then the ready position, and Chloe didn't really get to those positions, um, but that's something that is very, when I started to look at the serve and, and what really is important about practicing the serve is that, you know, it's not just about making contact with the ball and then watching it land in when you practice. It's really about prepare, practicing preparing for the next shot, which is the third ball in the rally. So if if Chloe is serving, that's ball one. If the return is ball two, and then the third ball. So these are the two areas, the, the, split, the opposite land, the split hop, and the ready really needs to be practiced because when you're playing points, that's going to happen. And if you, the more you practice it as a part of the serve, uh, the, the better you get at it. So. Right, right. So, so, and I see you also, you know, she, she bailed on the split hop and the ready position, so you kind of bailed. Here in Keith that's Redditor. exactly right. That's okay. exactly so, right. I just, so, so with that, yeah. let's save it, and I'll, I'll give you an idea here what I can do. Obviously, you know, at any point I can take my playhead and drag it through, but what I can now do is I can hover over these keyframe positions. So you notice you've got a lot of right. keyframe slots. Uh, Sterling, in this case, coaches use nine of those slots to define those positions, and now I can easily jump. So, so whether you know I'm shoulder to shoulder right. with Chloe, or whether I'm creating a you know, record an analysis by hitting the record right. button. I can just jump to squat, to racket back, and to contact. Right. Right. So like like you, like you, you said, play, Coach, this, this kind of gives you a, a vernacular, a, a you know, language to talk to her about. Right. Absolutely. So if you like for instance and the way you could look at the, you could you could do all kinds of judgments. Uh, look at look at her position, things like that. Uh, some things you you like about it. Some things you want to adjust. And what's yeah, great? I was about to say this really implies no judgment. So you you're really just kind of marking, like yeah. you said, where the racket is the most down. Now now for me that might be completely right. over my head. So but and then, and then you talk to me right. later about you know what it could have should have been. So that's exactly right. I mean this is really keyframing these points and then looking at it. Um, you know, based on your 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 coaching judgment, and then what's great is you can, you know, I guess this will lead us, and we can we can go into the next part where you can start comparing and contrasting um, better players or even professional players. Yeah. So here's so here's what I loved about this, coaches, is that what Sterling had been doing simultaneously is taking some of his best students, uh, students who, uh, in this case, uh, Colin, who you know goes completely through the set that has been defined. Yes. And let's, let's just do that, Sterling. Let's run through this real quick. I don't think it'll take more than a minute. Yeah. Let's pop up the keyframe editor on yeah. Colin. 
And now, instead of typing all of these in, because obviously they need to match for us to compare them to Chloe, what I'm going to do is hit load. And with Sterling's help, what I've done is I've put a new template in. So if I go to tennis, I've now got a serve movement. Now, obviously, we can do forehands and backhands. And you know, I really want to keep this going, Sterling. I think it's fabulous the work you're doing here. But if I take serve, what you'll see yeah. is that the list that Sterling's established you know, as the kinetic chain just jumps in, and I say use that template. So it saves me all that typing, and it right. uh, guarantees me that they line up, you know, with the way Chloe was keyframed. So, so I'm assuming Coach Stance yes. is just, just the first position. Yes. Well, in this in this frame, it is. I would say let's let's leave it there. Yeah, that's the very um, earliest. That's when this video starts. So well, also also well, notice, if you will, that that I really don't have to type these in. What I can do is I can just roll. Colin here to and tell me when I'm at high hand, Coach. Okay, right and there, uh, there. Okay, right there. So, so right there. Yeah, now, right now you there. notice uh, one thing I notice immediately is let me change to my to my line tool is that you know Colin has a much you know he if you, if you look at where the hand the vertical line that the hand creates he's you know much more behind yes. that line. Right. So, he's a, he's he worked on flexibility and. And um, he's really able to flex a lot better. And, and and again, what I can do, I can you know I can put my cursor in there, but I can also just hit the button. It says make the position I'm on here in the keyframe editor the same as the position I'm on in this case, frame 61 of the video. So now let's let's keep right. going forward. Let me get that line out of your way, coach. And I'll so so let's talk about squat. Now, mm -hmm. what what do you define as squat? Because mm -hmm. I, I could mark oh. it seems to me a couple of these keyframes. It's the it's the place it's the point in his squat right before he makes a an initial move his first initial move upward so it would be one frame back from that right there right there so that's okay. it because the next move he makes you'll see him move upward like a leg drive for uh, vertically and now in this case it's the same frame as high hand. So, so again, not not implying any judgment. We'll we'll come back. We'll, at least yeah, that's what we marked yeah, it. Or, yeah, or, or exactly. you know what? You know what I think? You know that I think yeah. I did, Coach. I think I hit the button while I was still on high hand. Yeah. So let's. That's right. High hand is right uh, there. Let, yeah. Let's call that fifty nine. Now we're mm -hmm. sixty one. And now let's let's yeah. talk racket back. Racket back would be back, and looks like it's going to be that place. Uh, I would one? say now, one more. I'm on six. I'm on 67. There, no, I would say no, back, back, back one more. Yeah, because he's not. He's the next move he makes is upward, so it's the okay. it's the lowest point of the racket, right? And of okay, course, you so can you have know, coach, you can make judgments on that, but that's that's where it is. So it's so it's the backmost and downmost, if you will. Right, where the tip of the racket is down, and then it goes up into contact. So contact would be there. 72. All right, so contact, easiest one for me to find. Now, I also think <laughs> I got land. I got, I got land from what you said before. So it's when land. when really all the weight is on the foot. There it is, right there. I'm going to say yep. right there. Right there. Right. right there. And then opposite, now, opposite land. land. There. All and the what I, what, that's it. Perfect, that's it. And he'll push off into his split hop. Push there, split hop now, is that there. The split hop right there. No, the split hop would be where he's vertical. Right. Keep going, and keep going, and right there, there. Okay. So he's at the top most point of his jump, and, and then the then ready position is there. Ready. Okay, yeah. beautiful. So, yeah. so, so again. It, you know, it probably took us three or four minutes to do that, but that's with all the commentary. I mean, this probably takes you, right. you know, now that now that you've been doing this, probably 30 mm -hmm. seconds to a minute yeah. to frame yes, a video. Yeah, probably about 30 seconds. Yeah, yeah, it's right. pretty easy to do. So with that done, I saved Colin, and now what we get is we get the ability to split the screen, and you notice Colin's got the same nine steps defined in his stroke. Now, now these, uh, what, what did you shoot this with, Coach? Um, I think it was a hundred and look. Uh, I think it was. Uh, I think it might have been ninety frames per second. Okay, now it it's showing twenty-nine. 
It's showing 29, 29 but it, what I found is in a lot of cases the camera will report 29 because that's the playback right. speed. Well, so, it was with the iPad. Really, well, it probably was 30. If it was the iPad, it was probably 30. So this, this is probably correct, 29.9. Okay. Now, now, what you can do at this point is you can lock these two together. And with them locked together, if I jump to squat on Collins, I'm jumping to squat on Chloe's. So right. now, in this case, if I roll forward I one frame, they, they might have slightly different pace. But other than that, they're going to match up. Right. But one, one thing about keyframing yes, is let, let's say one was shot at 120 frames a second. You know, if I choose to synchronize them by jumping, then they'll stay in perfect sync, you know, even if they're shot at radically different yes. frame rates. So, right. so let, let's let's put a little bit. I don't want to. Yeah, I don't want to turn this into a tennis lesson because we were really talking about the keyframing process. Right. But but you know, as we said earlier, Sterling, the the keyframes themselves don't imply judgment. So let's let's jump through. We'll start at high hand here, and let's you know let's add a little bit okay. of judgment. I mean, so so tell me, well, you know, who's who's in a better position and why? Well, I would say, you know, Colin I've been working with for about five years, Chloe about two years. So you can, and then, and then Colin's about a year and four months older than Chloe. So um, there's a little bit of strength issue there. But overall, you can kind of see how Colin looks to have more, his, his right shoulder is, is lower. His, his right elbow, right shoulder, and left shoulder are more in line. And Chloe's is, is getting there. She's not as rotated as much, but it's 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 getting better, much better. Um, uh, so, uh, and using the keyframes, you know, Chloe's been able to see how she's been able to keep her right elbow lower, and because it was much higher than this, it was almost way all the way up toward her ear. Now it's getting down below her shoulder. So you can start seeing, you know, Colin's going to get a better leg drive. You start going further into the video, you can kind of see how Colin really pushes up off the ground to his contact point. And then Chloe um, doesn't have quite as much leg drive. It's getting there and we're still working on that. But she's getting a lot better. I'm real excited. But what's great about this is I can you know, I can put them up. I can put Chloe up against, um, you know, a student. Their technique is developed more. I can put them up against a professional player. Um, but you can really begin to see the differences show up. You can see right here how Chloe's elbow is getting higher up near the ear. Right. If you go back just a little bit, yeah. So you can admit all that. So these keyframes are are very important. You can start to see how. You know, um, but go back to racket back. Go, I think that's five. Go back to racket back. Or yeah, three, four. That's it. Four. Yep. So you can see, like even Colin, like he doesn't have as much. Like I can look at this and go, well, Colin, look, like Chloe is. She's that racket back position is a little bit more flex, and so maybe Colin is losing some of his right. flexibility. So we need to work. On, we need to work on stretching more, and. Um, you know, get him in a little bit better racket back position. You know, the boy, boys are obviously stronger in their shoulders um, than girls, so Colin's able to use his shoulders to really uh, create more uh, pace or velocity. And, well, like um, like you said, like you said too, this really becomes a template for for Chloe in this exactly. case to to well, practice the uh, the split hop to to really finish you know, make that part of the routine. Right, exactly. Right, exactly. I can say, well, look how Colin pushed off his um, opposite land foot and then into the split hop and then into ready. So, yeah, absolutely. So it's it's a great template to use, and then you can begin to you you know use your coaching eye and coaching judgment to sort of get your student into optimal places where they can really maximize their serve. Well, you know, you know, if you've read, and we've we've talked about some of the books. That, uh, that we've both read. If you've read the talent code, you, you know you start to understand that it's practicing a perfect motion. You know as slow as you yes. need to to make it part of your routine, make it your yes. instinct. So, so yeah, it's so got to be a you know, practice. Right. Yeah, clearly the ability to to get in that ready position at the end of the serve is just something that's got to be baked into the to the motion as you as you do it thousands of times. Yeah. Right, you've got to practice it absolutely, Chance. Now, now you're actually so you're actually showing you, know, you you would actually show Chloe 
uh, you know, herself side by side like like we've done today with Colin? Sure, sure, absolutely. I mean, it, you know, uh, what to say? Picture, picture paints a thousand words or speaks a thousand words. So when they see it, they're like, oh, now I know, I know what you're, I know what you're saying now because you can say it. But then when you when they see it and they see another student or another peer that's close in age and they know you know Chloe and Colin they know each other so yes I know I know what you mean coach you know I can see how he's really pushing off and or I could put her up against another girl that I have um, you keep them female to female but you know most of these kids I work with they're they're good friends and we do things together right. so um, you know it's it's how you work it sometimes and now you're really, also yeah you're good. I was going to say sometimes it's more powerful if you actually put one of their peers up beside them instead of a, another pro. And sometimes right. they kind of check out. Well, that's not unrealistic. I really, you know, I, I, which which makes sense because I mean they're professional. They're ten, probably ten years older. So, um, you know, that's 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 kind of my feeling on the thing. Now, now you talked about a language, so so you're also using this, you know, as the language that, that you talk to them about their serve. Yes, it, it's it's really become a powerful thing because it's it's really relatable. I mean, we used we didn't use terms that could not be understood clearly. I mean, uh, obviously there's a little bit of definition to rack it back. Squats pretty that's pretty self-explanatory. Um, you know, land opposite land that would be you know you'd have to explain that with you know. Right. Your foot, but it makes sense once you once you put it all together and you begin to use the language, even on court. So I use the language on court. I'll pull out my iPad. I'll we'll go through it. I'll use the language as we're making corrections, things like that. So then then when they see the video, they're like, oh, okay. Well, this is opposite land. This is and they begin to become familiar with it. It's not it's not um, you know, obviously you could use different words. But it's um, we try, try to use the best words possible to describe it, um, so that basically anyone, you know, even a parent could look at this and go, oh, "Okay, I get that. I, I I can see that." So, you know, with, with that, let me um, let me bring up the the list that you develop. And, and what I'll do, coaches, I'll get and, and I'll distribute to the attendees here. You know, I'll get Sterling to put a sentence next to each of these. Because, you know, as you saw when we went and keyframed uh, Colin's video, you know, there's a specific frame that, you know, for Sterling sort of dictates where that point is in this kinetic chain that he talked about. So, Sterling, if you, if you could, you know, help me put a sentence to all this, it'll help some of the other coaches. And I think one of the advantages of this yeah. is as, as you go in, and I, I know uh, Sterling has gone into some of our pro videos and keyframed them as well, Again, if the languages matches, then the frames match. So, so you start to get an idea right. where you are, you know, uh, versus Murray, you know, versus Djokovic, and uh, with with those videos already keyframed, it lets you instantly just keyframe your student and then line them up. So, with, so with that, we've hit the twenty minute mark, twenty plus. So, so I'm going to open it up for questions, uh, coaches. If you've got questions, just type them in. You should have in your control panel, in the GoToMedia control panel, you should have a question pod. So uh, Sterling, first one's to you. Uh, Matt says, I, I teach the swoop, loop, and follow through uh, as, my, as my serve motion. Uh, how does that compare or contrast? I don't see any instruction in your list. So I'll, I'll put the list up while you, while you talk through that. All right. Well, the, well, the list is, is not real. Like we talked before, it's not really an instructional or passing judgment per se or, or different styles or technique of how you coach. It's really a definition of the points in the in the serve, you know, the points of you know where is the student in their where is where are they in the frame in the stance, high hand, squat, racket back, contact, etc. Right. And you just mark those and then once you've marked those, then you can go back and look at those positions. And then you know, sort of. Well, you know, if you need to be a little bit more loopy here, or wh whatever you're you're trying to achieve there, but you can, you have a point of reference. So these keyframes are really points of reference, and not really um, a coaching philosophy, if you will. Okay, so so it really just helps you line the videos up to each other, and then the judgment comes in in your particular critique. 
Absolutely. Okay, so uh, Dave, question, why not include keyframes to include the weight transfer, front foot, back foot, uh, then forward before contact? Also, how do you handle the differences in technique, like putting your feet together before contact? Um, well, let's see. So if you have like uh, the difference between like a platform where both feet, you launch off both feet, like Colin more has a platform. Well, Chloe does too. But you could do uh, if you saw if you see Murray before he has a step up. So you know they're going to step up into the squat position. And this and these two uh, players, they have more of a platform. Um, so, so I think to some degree, example? Coach, it's, it's kind of the same thing as we talked about before. The, you know, if you've got yeah. a particular uh, style, you know, or if you push right. you know, feet further or closer, it, it's going to show up in one of these frames, and then that becomes a discussion point. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it, the, whole, the whole idea of the keyframes is to, is to get you to look, have a closer eye to actually what's going on. I mean, that's the beauty of using video is you're able to see things that the naked eye cannot see in, in real time. And so to keyframe it, you can see whether the player is, is using their feet, uh, their leg drive in, in an efficient way. I mean, you can begin to start making judgments on that. Um, you know, that's a, I think that's a whole other webinar we could go into, you know, sort of, you know, here are the advantages of, of the different types of, and then style, style of play comes into mind. Um, right, but um, you know the yeah, main I, thing I when I look I, at you know. when I say, go ahead, Shirley. Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I was just going to say the, the the one thing I'm looking for specifically is you know not really how they compare, but are they using their their body in a very efficient way, and can, could it be more efficient? I think that's the biggest. The biggest question you can ask yourself and go through it as you as you go through the keyframes. Well, you know what I was about to say is I definitely want to keep going with this. Like I said, I just love it when coaches reach out and say, "Hey, I'm you know we're we're using the video analysis tools, and I want to put another layer on it. I want to go a little deeper on this, and in your case, uh, yep. keyframe a motion that we had not previously had a coach keyframe, and that starts to establish the dictionary. Now, coaches, whether or not you agree with or, or want to use the same dictionary, I mean, that's all customizable. So, you know, I can come in right. here and I can put, you know, extra steps and I can edit those steps and include them as part of my chain. So that's one of the things we're looking for is, that's right. is how you, yeah, how, how you uh, react to this, you know, where you'd like to see that go. And we'll definitely have a follow-up session. Uh, we're, we're right at the 30-minute mark, so I'm going to uh, take the question. Dave, I, got, I see that you've got another question. I'll... Uh, take that offline with you. I want to go ahead and uh, close out the session. And I want to do that by introducing, we, we will post this video and future videos at getbetterfaster.tv. So that is a site that we've created divorced from powerchalk.com. So, so even though you know, PowerChalk is the tool that we're using here, I mean, this is really about applying technology, methodology, and coaching to help your kids get better faster. It's really all about uh, creating a conversation you know, that helps you help your kids. So, so with that, you'll find this webinar posted. And to subscribe, uh, obviously you've got here, but if you want to have your fellow coaches uh, come to these sessions as well, have them go to getbetterfaster.tv and just hit the subscribe button. And that's going to subscribe them to the webinar series. And with that, whether they come to the live session or not, they'll start to get the links that lead to these posted videos. So, so with that, uh, I want to thank you for coming. Again, I'm Chad Henry. My guest today, Sterling Strother. Uh, Sterling, uh, thanks for coming. And everybody, thanks for tuning uh, in. Thanks, Chad. Appreciate it.